Welcome back to Lab Rat Scientific. Now today I want to talk about robotics. More specifically, underwater remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs. I've got some examples here. We'll do some experiments. We'll look at some theory. We'll look at how we wire them up. And hopefully I can inspire you to experiment with your own underwater devices. Now this is my first attempt at a home-built ROV. It uses PVC pipe as a structure. I've got some PVC pipe as buoyancy tubes. And I utilize small bilge pumps as thrusters. I have two forward thrusters, I have two downward thrusters, and on the bottom I have two upward thrusters. Now the system worked pretty good and it's pretty maneuverable and it's good for using in local ponds. But unfortunately I've disassembled the control electronics so I can't demonstrate how it works. But it was a neat first step at building an underwater ROV. Now this is a pretty neat little ROV. It was developed by the Office of Naval Research as part of their Sea Perch student competition. They hold this competition every year. Pretty neat design, made out of PVC pipe. It's got some flotation foam on it. It's got three motors housed in film canisters filled with wax to seal them up from the water. A simple little control system uh, to maneuver and operate. So let's take a look at how the system works and how it performs underwater. Now let's take a look at the simple wiring for the Sea Perch ROV. Now this system uses three three position switches. And I'm showing one of those switches here in this view. Now, the center position on the switch is off. You'll see there's no power running to the thruster. If I toggle the switch upward, I close the circuit, and you see the black and red wires leading to the motor, and that creates thrust pushing water in the upward direction. Toggle the switch to center, it turns off. If I toggle the switch downward, I get power to the motor, but in reverse polarity. You'll see the red wire on the top and the black wire on the bottom. So you can see how I can change the direction of the motor just by toggling the switch. And that's how I control the sea perch. Now here's a control system for the sea perch in action. I've got my control box with my three switches and there are three position switches, center off, up is one direction, back is the other direction. It's connected to a 12 volt battery which supplies power to the electric motors. Now if I toggle one switch, you'll see the vertical thruster operates. Push the switch in one direction, it goes down. Put it in the center, it stops. Push the switch in the other direction, it goes up. The same thing for uh, thrusters. I can fire them both at, uh, in unison, forward and reverse, or one at a time. And as you'll see underwater, it's very maneuverable and it works really well. Now, let's take a look at it operating underwater. You can try the small one first. Now I'll submerge and then resurface. Now let's check out the maneuverability of this small sea perch submersible. Now let's take a look at a simple diagram of my large underwater ROV. At the top of the structure, there are two buoyancy tubes. These tubes are sealed and full of air, and they compensate for the weight of the aluminum structures, the PVC pipes, and the electric motors and battery. There are two forward and reverse thrusters. These are also used for turning. You can see the two thrusters in the right-hand picture. There is one up and down thruster for submerging and surfacing. There's a sealed battery box that contains a 12 volt battery to run the motors. There's a sealed control box that contains the control relays for the motors. And this is the umbilical cable that runs to the surface that allows me to control the ROV. Now I protect the propellers with a propeller guard. This keeps debris from getting into the propellers. Here's my home built large open water submersible. Now the thrusters are forceful enough to be able to handle some ocean currents and dive pretty deep. Now I utilize PVC construction for the structure and I utilize three 12 volt trolling motors for propulsion. 
I have my two forward and reverse thrusters, which are also used for turning, and one vertical thruster in the middle for going up and down. Now I've got some control electronics housed in a watertight compartment. I've also got a 12 volt battery in a watertight compartment. So I have the power on board. Now I use control system, which is much similar to the uh, seat perch, which I showed earlier. And all I have to do is uh, throw a switch and then get a thruster to move in different directions for maneuverability. Now I've designed the system to allow me to hook it up to a computer and get a little more sophisticated with my control system. And I'm gonna do that later on. Now this is the back end of the submersible. So let's take a look at the front end. Here's a front end of my open water submersible. You can see the uh, PVC structure here. My 12 volt battery is contained in a watertight compartment here at the bottom. I've got a small underwater flashlight to give me some illumination. I've got a small underwater camera that's connected to the surface by a cable so I can see what's going on underwater. And I have a compass here which shows up in the upper right hand corner of my video image to give me an idea of the direction I'm heading. It lets me know where I am relative to the boat. Now, when I get more sophisticated and computerize this system, I'll be able to have a better video image. I'll be able to have computerized depth gauges and compasses and things to make maneuvering a lot easier. Now, let's take a look at the control system that operates this ROV and then see how it performs in the pool. Here's the control system for the large ROV. It consists of two relays represented by the purple rectangles, one here, one here. Now these relays are located on the submersible itself in a watertight compartment. Now at the surface, there is a switch, which is denoted by this green box, which is a three-way switch, center being off. Switching this way connects that pole, switching this way connects this pole. Now the relays are also connected to the propulsion battery on the submersible. And these propulsion batteries are the same battery. Now on the surface, if I have the uh, toggle switch in the center position, both of the poles of the thruster are grounded, so there's no voltage going to the thruster. However, if I toggle the switch in one direction, you'll see I get a closure at the surface switch. It energizes the electromagnetic coil on the relay, pulling in this contact, and now I have the positive side of the battery connected to the thruster on this side, and the ground on this side. So now the thruster operates in this direction. Again, if I return a switch to the center position, everything turns off. I toggle switch in the other direction. Now what I have is this relay actuating. Now what I have is the uh, battery positive pole is now connected to this side of the thruster. And now the thruster runs in the other direction. So, off, thrusting in one direction, off, thrusting in the other direction. Now let's take a look at the basic control concept for the ROV. Now, as I stated earlier, the buoyancy tubes were sized to make the entire system slightly buoyant in fresh water. Now, since salt water is higher density, I've got to actually add weights to the system to get it to float properly if I want to use the system in salt water. Now, vertical motion is achieved by using the up and down thruster, the thruster in the middle. I activate the thruster, shown here by the green propeller, and it pushes the ROV down. If I stop the thruster, it should float in water and not move up and down if it's somewhat neutrally buoyant. I reverse the thruster, shown here in red, and the system moves back upwards. Now I use the forward and reverse thrusters, the thruster on the left, for horizontal motion. I activate the uh, motor, shown here with the green propeller, and it'll push the ROV forward. If I stop the motor, it'll stop in place. If I reverse the motor, shown here in red, the ROV will move backwards. Now let's take a look at how I turn the ROV. Now this is a top view looking down. In the middle, you see the vertical up and down thruster. On the left-hand side, you see the two forward and reverse thrusters. Now to turn right, I fire up the thruster on the left, denoted by the green propellers, pushes water backwards to the left, and the ROV will turn to the right. Turn the thruster off and it'll stay in that position. Fire up the right hand thruster, as denoted by the green propeller, and it turns the ROV to the left. Now, if I want to turn quickly, I put one thruster forward and one thruster in reverse. And you see the directions here of the two propellers, and that makes the ROV turn quickly. 
All right, now let's try this larger one. Now take a look and see how this large submersible submerges. It acts the same way as a small sea perch ROV. It just needs to move more water. Now let's check out the maneuverability of the large ROV. During the maneuvers, you can see the various propellers spinning. And even though this system is much larger than the sea perch ROV, it's still very maneuverable. Now system buoyancy is an important consideration when designing an ROV. Now my ROV is balanced so it has a slight positive buoyancy. So eventually it will rise to the surface without any power, but it allows me to go up and down with very little thrust. Now the ROV will float differently depending on whether it's in fresh water or salt water. The ROV floats a little more easily if it's in salt water since salt water is more dense. Now water is considered to be incompressible, so the density of the water will not vary due to the pressure, or in other words, the depth. However, water density will change as the temperature of the water changes. Water temperature tends to decrease with depth, and the colder water is more dense. This means the buoyancy will increase as the ROV dives deeper. Now I could use active ballast tanks to compensate for the change in water density, but those become very complex, so I avoid using them. Well, that'll about do it for this time. Hopefully I've inspired you to maybe experiment with your own underwater, remotely operated vehicles. Maybe even inspire you to participate in the Office of Naval Research Sea Perch Competition. Alright, I hope to see you next time on Labrat Scientific.